Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are uh, looking here on our screen right now in behind me here, a Russian article off of RIA.RU. Uh, the document is stating that Russia is uh, preparing to send in their airborne troops inside of Belarus. As uh, we had mentioned before, the Zapad uh, um, uh, Zapad uh, military uh, drill that will be going on in cooperation between Russia and that of Belarus, the two countries coming together. Russia has already sent an enormous amount of equipment into the country there. And according to this report here, it will be in uh, April that this, uh, this military exercise will begin to take place. Uh, other exercises such as what we see right here, on uh, on uh, Mikhail's uh, site where he just uploaded it here, where uh, Russia in the Baltics is pl uh, practicing uh, live fire as well as uh, you know uh, launching uh, their their uh, amphibious uh, uh, equipment, their uh, armored personnel carriers into the sea there in order to do uh, landings on beaches there. This is something here that uh, happened here uh, earlier uh, uh, this week here. Uh, Russia doing these exercises here, preparing for possible battle with NATO. You know, what's interesting is there has been some reports already by, uh, by different analysts that uh, if there is going to be a war between Russia and NATO, it will not actually begin in Ukraine. But rather, analysts are saying that they believe it will begin with Belarus. They said mainly because Russia will be more inclined to go through Belarus than they would be uh, to go through Ukraine because of securing Kaliningrad. I thought that was kind of an interesting twist to the whole scenario, but nonetheless, of course, if it did begin in Belarus, Ukraine no doubt would take a heavy brunt from that attack as well uh, because Russia would begin to secure the people of the eastern uh, uh, part of Ukraine in any type of onslaught of a, of a conflict there. Now, you might wonder why is Russia doing all of this to begin with? In fact, today, excuse me, not today, but uh, this actually was from three days ago. I actually saw this yesterday. Uh, this video footage right here um, is it was supposedly being tested here in Europe. This is in the country of Slovakia, my wife's home uh, country, and they were testing to see just how much military equipment and tanks, etc., can they push uh, it across on one uh, rail car there. And the number of tanks and armored personnel carriers, medevac equipment, etc., that are being that are being railed here is the largest that has ever been attempted, from what we can understand there. And of course. Uh, you have to see the entire footage here, but it is an amazing uh, line of equipment that was captured here. Kind of give you a little bit more view again here uh, in both directions as they first picked it up here. And as you can see, just very long uh, 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 carrier here carrying all of this equipment there uh, going towards uh, Poland uh, from what we gathered on that right there, uh, Eastern Europe there. I thought this here, I wanted to share this with you guys as well. This is from Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty. Now, this is actually a pro-Ukrainian source. It says, our tanks are ready. Ukraine braces for escalation in Eastern war. The whole thing is, it's already been proven even by Ukrainian journalists that it's Ukraine itself that has launched all the offenses against the people in the eastern part of uh, Ukraine there, the ones that are calling themselves the self-proclaimed uh, separ separatists there that are fighting for the Donetsk People's Republic. Um, but I thought, like I said, the picture is worth a thousand words here. The eastern uh, separatists have been saying all along that Kiev has been hiding their tanks in the civilian populations. And the very picture they chose to use in their own pro-Ukrainian uh, literature here as two tanks sitting right there next to an apartment building. Interesting, isn't it? I guess eastern Ukraine is not just spewing out propaganda. They're showing the facts as well as Ukraine itself, showing their own footage there of their tanks sitting right there in populated areas. 
I wonder why this war has taken such a huge death toll on both sides of the contact line there. The civilian populations are being obliterated by uh, a war such as this here. Uh, some more breaking news that I find very, very disheartening here is that uh, the Times of Israel is reporting that uh, uh, Zippy Livni will uh, to be the first Israeli deputy chief of the UN. That post has been offered to her uh, personally by uh, one of the heads of the UN. It says here that the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has reportedly offered a post to Deputy Secretary General to former Israeli former minister to, uh, Sepi Livni. And I do believe that she would probably more than likely get the post and would be confirmed by the United Nations members to begin with. Why? Because Zippy Livni is a very pro-two-state candidate that was running against Prime Minister Netanyahu in a former election. She narrowly lost, and of course, it's the very type of advocate that the United Nations would like to have. No doubt Rome will be very pleased to see her enter into that post. If they can't get her as Prime Minister of Israel, put her in another post that will only put pressure on Israelis. I think it's a very alarming uh, development that is coming out of Israel and very concerning, no doubt, for the future of Israelis and Palestinians as well. Uh, Arut Shiva is also reporting to the Prime Minister Netanyahu will ask President Trump to waive Jonathan Pollard's parole conditions and allow him to immigrate to Israel. Of course, he was catching a plane earlier today, headed to Washington, him and his wife, uh, going to meet President Donald Trump. According to some of the articles that are coming out about that meeting there, President Trump will not be mentioning the word two-state solution during their meeting. But no doubt President Trump will brief Netanyahu on just how serious it is to continue uh, pushing for the settlement, uh, settlement development inside of what is considered to be the West Bank, Judea and Samaria. Uh, I think that is a rather... Uh, tough situation no matter which way you look at it. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget, we are going to Israel next month, March 28th, holding a very important meeting inside uh, of the old city there. We invite you to come and also ask for your help and support in making that happen. You can contribute uh, at our, our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, if that's something that you would believe in. I'm Stephen Benoon. Israeli News Live, Arab Tov.